Yes, my name is Beatrice Waithaka. Let me not assume that everybody knows me. I'm a member of this church, and I delight in serving under the leadership of Bishop G.B. Kiyomani and Pastor Alice and the pastoral team. This month, is the month of October, is our Thanksgiving month because next month we are celebrating 40 years. So we've been doing the, the, the message of Thanksgiving since the first of this month, and today we want to look at Gratitude and suffering, or thanksgiving in suffering. And you're asking, how can you give thanks? Or how can you be gra grateful in suffering? The Bible says in the book of First Thessalonians 5.18, First Thessalonians 5.18, give thanks in all circumstances. It didn't say in some, but it said in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. This is not God's will for your family. It is for you as an individual. It doesn't matter what you are going through. What the Lord demands, before he, he performs that miracle, he desires thanksgiving. And because it is his will, we all, when we got born again, we desire to walk in the will of God. Therefore, one of the things that the Lord expects from you, it is giving thanks. It doesn't matter what you are going through. It doesn't matter even now what you are going through. But the Lord expects a thanksgiving or a heart of gratitude. Gratitude and suffering are two of the most fundamental aspects of the human experience. I come again. That gratitude it is not suffering and gratitude, but it is gratitude and then suffering. It doesn't matter what is glazing at you this morning. But the Lord is saying, give me thanks because I knew you are going to overcome. While they may seem to be polar opposite, they are deeply intertwined. And understanding the fellowship between the two can help us live more fulfilling and meaningful lives. The moment you know that the Lord expects a gratitude or a grateful heart from you, regardless of what comes your way, and regardless of what you are going through now, I may not know what you are going through. You may not know what I'm going through. But in life, there must be sufferings. Allow me to say that. People tell you, uokoke wachane na shida. My friend, ndi unengia kwa shida. Because ukiokoka, where you were supposed to say no, you cannot say yes or no. You can say, you only say no. Where you are supposed to say yes, you only say yes. Therefore, that gospel, that uokoka uachane na shida, it does not exist. Na kuambia uokoke, upatane na nini? Na shida. Bwana asifiwe. Gratitude is an affirmation of the good and a recognition of where that good is sourced. There must be a source of gratitude. Regardless of what we are going through, and regardless of what we will go through, if you look at your left and your right, backwards, you know you cannot see your tomorrow, but you can see your past, you can see your left and your side, on, on your right, and you say, do I even have something to thank God for? I want to submit to you this morning that the Lord expects gratitude in whatever situation you are, because he knows that you are going to overcome. Suffering, on the other hand, refers to the experience of pain, hardship, and adversity. That is suffering. It's an experience of pain. You cannot feel for my pain. I cannot feel for your pain. It is me who knows what I am going through. It is me who knows the pain that I'm going through. And the same case applies to you. But regardless of the experience of your pain, of your hardship, and adversity, all those are subtotal of what the Lord is expecting from you. That going through all this pain, the Lord wants to say thank you. But it doesn't matter what I'm going through. I can give you thanks. Suffering is an inevitable and avo an unavoidable part of the human condition. You cannot say since me I was born. Now I'm 23 years. I'm 40 years. I've never gone through pain. Then you are, you, you're not a human being. Because this flesh, this kind of flesh is subject to pain. And nobody is inevitable of pain. Nobody can avoid pain. Are we together, church? And something that we all must learn to cope with. We must learn to cope with pain and suffering. That is part and parcel of life. 
And I want to think if I can bring the message home. All of us have gone to a restaurant. Or let's, not go, or let's go to your kitchen. In your kitchen, there are so many ingredients, and salt is one of them. Are we together? Oh, let, no, let's go to the restaurant because I know, yes, we can afford to go to the restaurant. When you go and ask a plate of food, or you order a plate of food, when this food is placed on, your, your, on, on, your, on the table, what is expected of you it is to pay. Are we together? And what you are paying this food, salt is inclusive. But you can say, you can call the waiter and tell the waiter, I want you to serve me a plate of salt. Is it making sense? But salt is where? In the food. The same case applies to our lives. Suffering is part and parcel of our lives. So whatever you are going through today, whatever you are suffering, I want to tell you, you are not out of order. You are in order. You are in the right track. Gratitude. Although gratitude is generally associated with receiving a good, it is not just a switch to, to run, to turn to run to, or when life is going well. You cannot say now because life is going well, I cannot suffer. I tell you, friends, today you laugh, today you, tomorrow you cry. That is how life is. Today you are mourning, tomorrow you are rejoicing. That is what we call life. Gratitude is also a light that shines in the darkness. Unless you go through the darkness, you don't desire light. Opening new methods, foreseeing and new possibilities for living. When you see the light, you say, hallelujah, the light has come. Because you are in darkness. Those two things go hand in hand. We can find gratitude in our suffering only when Jesus is the most important thing in our world. What is so important in your life today? Apart from Jesus. Anything else. In all foundations, friends, they are coming down. But only Jesus will remain standing. And that's why he said, you focus your eyes unto me, the author and the finisher of your faith. Jesus wants to walk with you through this journey of faith. Jesus wants to walk with you to eternity because he knows your end coming to your beginning. The only thing and the only place you can hide yourself, times that you are living now, it is in our Lord Jesus Christ. Then anything that pushes us into his arms is a gift. Suffering is that gift wrapped with grace. Suffering is that gift wrapped in grace because it is only his grace that can make you go through what we are going through. As we reflect on what it means to be thankful this month, what about thinking about what gratitude is really about in light of the cross? What we are going this through this month, we are the, in the celebration mood of 40 years. But remember this, 40 years after that of November, will be a history, but there's somewhere we are going. How is your life? And I want to thank God for Pastor Joy this morning. She took to, to, to focus our lives. Why not for the cross? Where could we be? Jesus suffered. For you to be where you are this morning, for you to see that you are born again, remember, Jesus suffered on the cross because of your sins and my sins. And he's so beyond the grave because he had a heart of gratitude. What about us? The Lord is saying this morning, just come and embrace me because I know the way and you don't know the way. Talk to anyone, not greeting. I said, talk to anyone. You know, greetings in the salama, that is salamu. But talk to anyone for a long time and you'll hear the ring of suffering in their story. Because all of us here, there's something we are going through. Because this is life. But the message of the gospel is the message of suffering. And we are commanded not to be requested to be thankful for it. If Jesus went it through that painful death because of you and me, what about us? 
But you know, grace is sufficient. We may not go through what he went through the whole, the, the, in, in totality, but we must suffer. I'm saying we must suffer. Think of somebody, the athletes who go to run, they are running for a crown, they are running for a prize. What about you? you are, can you sit in the house and say, me, I am born again, I am going to heaven. I cannot leave my house because outside there is no life. Outside there is death. I want to remain in my house because I want to remain holy. Friends, you must go out and mingle with the world so that your faith can be able to stand. And if we, when mingling with others, you be, you, you, what you bring back home, it is a scar that you see here. I was hit. Because the gospel is about suffering. Every word from the mouth of a king becomes a law. So in this journey of salvation, suffering is not exempted. Jesus left the throne. He came here to seek and to save that which was lost. You must leave your cocoon. You must leave your comfort zone and go out. And going out, you will suffer. You may not suffer like, uh, like, 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 like the apostles. You may not suffer like the disciples. But believe you me, suffering is part and parcel of your life. As that we, are, we go out, you, you meet somebody, you preach somebody, but the response puts you down. And you have exhausted all your energy thinking that this person will give their life to Jesus. And I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm You feel intimidated, humiliated. But what do you do? That is what I'm calling suffering. You suffer. You pray and fast. You put this body under subjection. Those are the sufferings. People eat well. People drink well. People sleep well. But for you, you are under because suffering is part and parcel of this life. We all, grew th we all go through difficult times, but how often do we say thank you during those times? When you wake up in the morning, you have a headache. What do you do? You curse the day. Remember this. Though you, are, you have a headache in the morning, you are able to open your eyes and know today is the 20th of October. There's somebody who was well last night, but they never saw the light of this day. They're not expecting you to say thank you, no matter how you wake up this morning. When you wake, wake up in the morning, the first knock on, on your door was your agent. Then you say, can I look for a plan B? It seems the plan A is not working, but I can look for a plan B. I'm going to submit to you this morning that suffering is part and parcel of your life. Suffering is like your air, the air that you breathe. Without suffering, please check your life once again. Show God gratitude to all things, good and bad, as he has instructed, and you will set yourself apart this season of Thanksgiving. Banais was a favorite. Suffering is having what you don't want, like pain. Who wants pain? Who wants pain? Nobody. And wanting what you don't have. Are we together? You have what you don't want, and you want what you don't have. All those that are called suffering. Everyone is suffering in some way, even you this morning. If the Lord could stand here and ask you, what you're suffering from. I know this is a youth service. And number one, I know what you're suffering from. It is the stigma. That you go home, you are alone. They're expecting you to have somebody behind you. Because the parents have an expectation. So that is what you're suffering from. But remember this. Marriage, it is not final. Finality is Jesus Christ. How many are marriages today and they cannot see one another, eye, eye and eye to one another? But I want to submit to you. It is good to get married because it is biblical. And that is the first institution that Jesus, our God, began. But let me tell you, don't allow yourself to be a culprit of suffering. Leave alone the ears. When you came to this world, did they tell you, I'm going to give you a husband at 25 years? Did you have a, a, an agreement? Now, who, what is bothering you? Is it written in your Bible, because it is not in my Bible, that you not enter heaven when you are single? Is it written in your Bible? Now, why are you suffering? Why are you suffering? <coughs> Psalm 
Wana Yesu wasifiwe. Therefore, you might find it hard to be thankful today because when you look at your friends, you used to go to, we went to school together, she dropped out form two and she got married, she's doing very well. Uh, we continue with this other one. Uh, at form four, she dropped, she got married. Your work is to keep records. You became an accountant for who? You are keeping records one after the other. And I tell you, that is what the enemy wants, that you can keep a record for him. Who employed you? It is the enemy. That now you know I'm 30. Yeah, those are your ears. Not my, they are your ears. Sindio. They just, those are, you are, th you are 30, you are blessed. And you know me, I'm only 40. I'm not even my, not. What are you not? Just say, me, I am 40. I'm so grateful that I'm 40 years. Now, una mutu, nikona watu. Kwa sabu, nikona yesu. Number one, nikona yesu. Number two, nikona my family. The rest was jana now. But I didn't want to put you down. That ujatosha unga, ujatosha unga, sindio? Ujatosha, you know this as you, this service. Ujatosha unga, sindio? Ati kwa sabu, una mutu. Mwambie mi, nikona mutu, nikona yesu. Number one, nikona yesu. Mutu number one, nani? Mutu number two. And the rest. No, the husband and the wife are there. The rest. When it was Katharika. Bwana Yesu wasifiwe. Suffering, I want to bring some few points and then I'll be done. Suffering motivates us. Number one is suffering motivates us. Pain and suffering are very effective motivating forces. Pain and suffering. Suffering also moves us to prioritize our lives because during times of trouble, we should see more clearly what is important and what is not. When you're in trouble, you can say this one is darkness and this is light. We thank God for suffering. It motivates us. For example, if it were not for suffering, Job could not have found the answers to the questions that his suffering made him ask of God. Who has gone through in this house this morning? Like what Job went through. You are, you, you, you are trying to, to put our father, our God and our father into task because he has not remembered you to give you a husband or a wife. Job had a wife. Job had a, 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 a Job had a wife. The wife had a husband. You tell them, I cannot serve you. I don't have a child. Job had children. Even ten of them. Can you imagine? Not unos, unos moja. He had ten of them. Job had wealth. But one day, say my one day, that one day can be for you, for God to remember you. And that one day made a difference in Job's life. Everything followed one another. This one passed this door, the other one passed this window. The other one passed through here. One day. That one day can be for you. That the Lord can open and say, today, I want to remember Jane. Today, I want to remember John. Today, I want to remember Mercy. Today, I want to remember Joseph. That one day can make a difference in your life. Either positive or negative. It is suffering that motivates most people to search for God. Suffering. A disease strike in your body. And this makes you to know where heaven's gate is. People say, I'm going for a kesha. To pray the whole night. Pray for what? A whole night. But one day, something strike in your body. You knew you can pray. Not even one day. Every day for 30 days, you are here. Where? Here. Then from some I'm going to visit for three months. Those are 90 days. That is not our portion. You search for God, search for his will, and search for his presence in your life. Without suffering, we tend to stay in one dimension and not think too deeply about this. We just stay at the service because things are good. Number two, suffering enables us to sympathize. Suffering enables us to sympathize. The Bible tells us that even Jesus had to suffer pain in order to become our savior and our mediator. It was not given to him on a slipper plate or a golden plate. 
he had to go through suffering for you and me that he can be our savior and our mediator. Interceding for us, even now, that is what he's doing. Interceding for us. But remember, he suffered for it. In the book of Hebrews 2, 17 and 18, the Bible says, for this reason, he had to be made like them. Like who? Like us. Fully human in every way in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people. We were the people. Number verse 18 says, because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he's able to help those who are being, are you tempted? You have a mediator. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Number three, suffering reveals the shock of sin. Suffering reveals the shock of sin. Some people blame God for their suffering or are angry at him for not stopping the suffering. How many have been there that Lord can to stop this suffering? Now another one. Now another. Somebody said this, that in life you are either in a storm, coming out of one, or ready to enter into one. Therefore, even this morning, you're not in, in, in any suffering. Believe you me. And take this to the bank. That tomorrow, I didn't say tomorrow, Monday, but tomorrow. Tomorrow might be next week, or next month, or next year. You'll be ready to enter into another storm. Because that is life. And that is what we'll be paid for. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. All this began with Adam and Eve when they disobeyed God, resulting in the fall of man, of human race, sorry. And as the sinfulness of mankind multiplied, the fall of the creation as well. It did not begin with us. Suffering began at the garden of it because of disobedience. If these parents were obedient, me and you, we cannot live a life for suffering. Suffering could not be in our, in, in our life. But because they disobeyed, the Lord removed them to the garden and replaced that garden with the suffering. And that's where me and you, we suffer. We suffer in all things. People, that, you that are not married here, you are telling God, if you can only give me a husband, and the Lord gives you the husband, then you go back. You know, we are born in the lives of, our, our human nature is a life of asking. You ask, Father, give me a husband. He gives you a husband. You go back. Father, give me a child. He gives you a child. Then you go back. There's no way you can say thank you. It is only asking. Father, give me a, a grandchild. He gives you a grandchild. But you say in, in your word, that's how you address the Lord. But you say this is the fourth, gener up the fourth generation. The Lord gives you the fourth generation. When you do say thank you, it is only asking. Because this body, this flesh, it is made up of asking. Every day you are asking. Even when you are well, you cannot say, no, because I am well. Allow me to go to the hospital to tell those people in the hospital that Jesus loves them. But you are so, you are so selfish because it is about me, I, and myself. You look at your family. This is your husband. This is your wife. This is your children. We are now going to Mombasa for holiday. Are we together? But the Lord is saying, are you the same person who came to me? Are you the same person who asked me for this? Where are you to give thanks? When you came to us, you tarried the whole night. But when the blessings came, he went to that. that the way you intensified your prayer request, intensify your thanksgiving. Number four, suffering draws us closer to God. Suffering draws us closer to God. Some blame, some blame God for their pain. Others draw closer to him because of their pain. Where are you? Do you blame God or it has drawn you closer to God? The apostle Paul, who was already quite knowledgeable concerning God's word and his will, drew near to God when he suffered, not when he studied. When he suffered, not when he studied, studied. It was his pleading with God to remove his thorn in the flesh and let him, and let he, let him to hear the Lord say, my grace 
is sufficient for you. This is 2 Corinthians 12, 7 to 9. 2 Corinthians 12, 7 to 9. Or because of these surpassingly great revelations, therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited or to become contented, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to make it, to take it away from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in the weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. We all have a throne in the flesh. That was for Paul. And nobody knows the kind of a thorn he had. I don't know your thorn. You don't know my thorn. But we all have a thorn in this walk of life. But the Lord is not going to remove it. Because in the moment he removes you, you are going to boast. But he wants that thorn to be. So that when you, some would think that it is about you, he touches the thorn. And then he brings you on track. Suffering in all of its forms makes us back to make us move back to where we should be. So when the Lord touches the thorn, it takes you back to where you belong. Depending on God for every breath we take. But suffering is usually needed to bring that reality home for us. You have really ran. The Lord is calling. You cannot even hear him calling you. What he does, he just put a block before where you are going. The, end, the road ends. Then you turn back and find him where you left him. Suffering. And it is not easy for the Lord to bring you back. Think of somebody like Nebuchadnezzar. That man ate grass for seven years like an animal. And nobody could have changed his life apart from God. Key, keys to a good attitude in the midst of suffering. I bring two, three of them. Key number one. Deposit yourself in God. Just deposit yourself in God. You are not on your own. You belong to God. Deposit yourself in God. Number two, our, our self, deposit yourself in the bank of God. God has, God has a bank. You don't know his name. But God has a bank. He said, deposit yourself in his bank. And number three, it is better to be in the wilderness than to be in captivity. Because in the wilderness, God will provide. But in captivity, he cannot provide. Buana Yesu Asifiwe. Allow me to bring this story, then I, I close. A man by the name of Matthew Henry. This is a Bible commentator. He was reflecting on what he went through one day, and he was thankful. He said this, that he was robbed. He was robbed. But he said, first he said this, I want to thank God because he never robbed me before. That man never robbed him before. He robbed him now. Number two, he said, because although he took my past, he did not take my life. You see, this man is thankful. Number three, he said, because although he took all I possessed, it was not much. Finally, number four, he said, because it was I, it was, it was I who was robbed, not I who robbed. Can you see that? The gratitude. This man, in the midst of the suffering, he has something to thank the Lord. Henry's attitude is the one we need. We need a heart of gratitude. No matter what we are going through, no matter what will come, first and foremost, when you op open your eyes and see, this is a new detail, the Lord. Thank you for the masses of the night. And thank you for the grace that's going to take me through this day. Because I believe and I know suffering is part and parcel of our lives. The Bible says in Psalm 34, verse, 9, verse 19, that many are the afflictions of the righteous. Not less, not to the wicked, but many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivers them from all. It doesn't matter what you're going through, my brother, my sister. 
the Lord has promised to help you and to deliver you from all. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you this morning for the promise we have in you. We know we can do nothing without you, King of all the glory. And this morning, we totally surrender to you, Jehovah Father. Whatever we are going through, whatever we went through, whatever we'll go through, it is all in your hands. Help us to know one thing that you'll never leave us, nor forsake us. Walk with us through these mountains. Walk with us through these valleys. Even in the, in the slippery road, dear Father, walk with us so that one day we shall have a testimony to share and say, this far it has taken God and your grace has been sufficient. When every eye is closed, I want you to search your life and ask yourself, who am I walking with in this suffering? Bible says that Jesus saw beyond the cross. Bible says that Stephen, when he was stoned, his eyes opened. He didn't feel the pain. His eyes opened, and he saw Jesus sitting on the right hand of God. And that gave him comfort. That gave him peace. This morning, who are you working with? And maybe you're here not born again. You are saying, Lord, hold my hand. Hold my hand and walk with me. I have walked alone. I have seen the consequences. Now hold my hand and walk with me because you know the way and you are the light. Walk with me. Are you there? It is my prayer to pray with you and for you. You'd love to give your life to Jesus. Are you there? Just lift your hand and I'll see it and I'll pray with you. Father, we thank you and we bless you. Thank you because your promises are yea and amen. You love us, Jehovah Father, with our weakness. Jesus, we just surrender ourselves to you. In our suffering, we will suffer together with you because your promise has victory at the end of the journey. We love you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. <laughs>